Hi, my name is Milan and in this video I'm going to share how I built a neural network from scratch using only C Sharp. I'll have to brush off the dust off of my old notebook that contains the notes for when I was building this neural network. And if I open up the first page, you should be able to see the diagram for this neural network. The neural network is used for digit recognition and it takes in an image that is 28 by 28 pixels and converts that into a vector of probabilities that tells you which digit this is out of 0 to 9. So here's another page from this book that contains some calculations and all of the good stuff that's needed to actually build a neural network. Now, a few disclaimers before I continue with this video. I'm absolutely not an expert in machine learning and neural networks. I'm just going to share my experience of building a neural network from scratch and what I learned from this. There's also a possibility that I'm going to make a mistake in some of my explanations, so don't take it against me. It's been more than seven years since I last worked with neural network and machine learning isn't really my main field of work. And with that out of the way, let's jump into a theoretical discussion about neural networks if you are unfamiliar with it. And after that, I'm going to show you the actual application that I built for recognizing handwritten digits. My main goal with this video is to educate about neural networks and machine learning. And I have to preface this by saying that what we're going to discuss in this video isn't really the state of the art when it comes to machine learning and models like ChatGPT and the latest tech that's coming out of OpenAI uses a vastly different architecture. However, the fundamentals that we are going to discuss here are definitely helpful when it comes to understanding machine learning. So what is a neural network and why does it have such a name? A neural network is a machine learning program or model as it's often called that makes a decision similar to a human brain. So this is where the name neural network comes from. It's supposed to mimic the network of neurons that all of us have inside of our heads. When it comes to the architecture of a neural network, each network consists of a set of nodes and we could have any number of input nodes, the intermediate nodes and output nodes. The first layer inside of a neural network is called the input layer. Then we could have any number of hidden layers in between. In this example, there is only one, but in practice, there could be many layers within the neural network. And then the last layer of the neural network is called the output layer. And this is what produces the results of a neural network calculation. Now, each of the nodes inside of a neural network is essentially a computational unit that takes in some input parameters, such as x1, x2, and x3. It multiplies the input values by another set of parameters called weights, and weights are associated with the connections between the layers in a neural network. And what a neuron is going to do is it's going to multiply the input with the respective weight, sum all of these values, and then pass that along as the output of this neuron to the next layer of the network. Or if this is the output layer, then we're going to do something with the result. The individual nodes are most often referred to as artificial neurons, and each artificial neuron consists of a set of weights, which could be interpreted as how important a given input is, for the result of a neuron. So as I said, we're going to multiply the input value with the respective weight, sum all of this, introduce a bias, which is another parameter that I'm not going to discuss in depth. And then we're going to pass this along to what is called an activation function. I'm going to show you an example in just a moment. And this activation function represents an output of our neuron. So when we combine many of these nodes, which are called artificial neurons, we produce a neural network. And with this computational structure in place, we can start to do some interesting things. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. First, I want to explain what an activation function is. These are functions that actually represent the output of a neuron. And a commonly used activation function is called a ReLU. And what this function does is it returns zero for any value that is negative. And then if the value is positive, it just returns the same exact value. So this is how an artificial neuron produces an output. If the sum of the product of the weights and the inputs is negative, then the neuron is going to output zero. Otherwise, it's going to output the value of this sum. And then it's up to us to somehow interpret this value and produce a result. So the question is, how can we use neural networks? And an excellent use case for neural networks is classification problems. These are decision-making problems where we get an input on one end, let's say an image with a zero, and we want the neural network to tell us 
which digit this is. This would be a hello world example in the realm of machine learning, and this is exactly what the neural network that I built does. It takes in an image with a handwritten digit, and it produces an output that should tell us which digit this is. Now you can see how we can combine this to solve computer vision problems. Imagine that this is a set of numbers on an invoice, it could be a license plate number, and we want to be able to read the license plate number. This is how you could practically apply a neural network. Now, what we are fundamentally doing with neural networks is we are modeling mathematical functions. Let's say I have a function that takes in an input image, and it tells me what number this is. This is what I want my neural network to do. And the question is, how do I get there? Here's a visual representation of a digit recognition neural network, and these images actually come from a popular dataset that's used for machine learning. It's called the MNIST dataset, and it comes with 60,000 images that you can use for training your neural network, and 10,000 images that should be used for verifying the quality of the results. So the input is a 28 by 28 pixel image. The pixels of the image are in grayscale, and they represent the input into our neural network. When we multiply 28 by 28, we get 784 pixels, and this is going to be the input layer into our neural network. Now, an image is a two-dimensional array of pixels, and we're going to feed this into our neural network as a one-dimensional array by flattening the matrix in the row-first approach. Then everything in between is our calculations, and we could have one or more layers inside of our neural network, and the output is going to be 10 neurons, which is going to represent the probability of which number this is. So it could be either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. So this is the high-level idea of how our neural network is going to produce an output. Now, let's actually talk about the machine learning aspect. A popular technique for training neural networks is called gradient descent. I'll try to explain this in simple terms, but essentially, I said that we are trying to model a mathematical function that tells us which number we are getting based on the input image. And if I represent this mathematical function as a graph, it could have a structure like this. What machine learning allows us to do is to calculate how far off from a correct result we currently are, represented by the green dot here, and then gradient descent gives us a way to learn how to produce a better result. So essentially, we want to move our neural network down along this slope to as small of a value as possible, where the actual value represented by this green dot quantifies how wrong we are or how far away we are from the correct answer. Now, the ideal distance from a correct answer is zero, which means that we have the correct answer, and our goal during training a neural network is going to be to calculate what is the current error of the neural network, and then try to move that value as close to zero as possible. Now, let's go back to the top of the slope. How do we actually know in which direction we are going? We could be moving up along the slope, which is not where we want to go, or we could be going down, which means the error of our neural network is decreasing, which is what we want. Now, this next part is going to require some advanced math to understand correctly, but I'm going to try to explain it in simple terms. So, at any point on this graph, we can apply the first derivative calculation of the function represented by our neural network, and the first derivative tells us if the function at any given point is increasing or decreasing. If you recall, we want to try to minimize this value, so we can use the first derivative of the function to figure out if we are going up the slope, and in that case, we're going to tell our neural network to head in the other direction, and if we are going in the correct direction, then we're going to tell it to just keep going that way until we get to a minimal value. The algorithm that's used with gradient descent for machine learning is called backpropagation. And the reason it's called backpropagation is because we first calculate what is the output of the neural network for a given set of input data, then we calculate how far off are we from the correct result, which represents the error, and then we're going to backpropagate this error through the individual artificial neurons in the neural network, starting from the output layer and then moving towards the input layer of the network. The backpropagation algorithm can be summarized in the four formulas that you see here, and I won't even attempt to try to explain them, but what I want you to take away from all of this is that neural networks are essentially mathematical functions based on a lot of calculations that happen in the background to try to produce the optimal result. Now let's go back to our digit recognition example. This is how a set of images from this data set looks like. And you can see that under each image, 
there are a set of labels. Inside of our data set for each image, we also have an information for what is the correct number represented in this image, and we can use this information to determine if the output of our neural network is correct. And this type of machine learning is called supervised learning, because we have all of the available information. There are other approaches to machine learning that are far more complex, and this is the simplest one, which is why I called it the hello world of machine learning. And this is because we can take an input, in this case, a 28 by 28 pixel image, feed it into the neural network and observe what is the output. And the trick here is that we also know what is the correct output. So we can compare this value that we know is correct to the output of a neural network, use that to calculate how far off from the correct answer we are, and then use this information to determine in which direction we want to move the parameters inside of our neural network. So hopefully this gives you a high level understanding of how neural networks work. Now let's jump into the code and I'll show you how I implemented this in C Sharp. This is the digit recognizer application that I wrote some seven years ago and it implements all of the concepts and algorithms that I discussed in the previous slides. This particular piece of code is how we initiate training and testing of a neural network. And I created an abstraction called a learning pipeline that allows me to configure how I want to train my neural network. There are some concepts here like gradient clipping, regularization, dropout, which weight initializer I want to use. The next part, and this is really the critical aspect here, is the actual layers of the neural network. For each layer, I can decide how many inputs it has and how many outputs it has. And what's important is to align the number of outputs from one layer to the number of inputs of the layer underneath. Now, because digit recognition is a classification problem, the output is always going to be 10 neurons, and we're going to be using something called a softmax activation function, which allows me to calculate a vector of probabilities representing which digit we got on the output. Now, if I wanted to create a more complex neural network, I can go ahead and copy a few layers, and then I just have to align the respective inputs and outputs. And you can even define a smaller layer at the start, connecting to a bigger layer underneath. So let's say I have the input layer with 784 pixels or neurons feeding into the next layer, which has 100. Then we have a layer with 500 feeding into a layer of 200 and then feeding into a layer of 100 and finally the output layer of our neural network. So this is how you can create deep neural networks. Now I can also create a very simple neural network that has just one input layer and an output layer directly. The benefit of a small neural network like this is that you can train it pretty quickly, but it's not going to give you the most precise answer even when you finish training. And I'm going to show you what training looks like in just a moment. A few more things I have here is which optimization algorithm I want to use, then I'm configuring the actual learning pipeline and running the pipeline. After this finishes, I get what's called a prediction model, which is just another abstraction that I created. And then I'm going to use this prediction model on the testing data to figure out what is the accuracy of my model. If I go ahead and start the application, you will see I get a set of numbers on the output. And what the value here represents is the actual error of the prediction. If you recall from my previous slides, the goal here is to make this value as small as possible. So in this case, we managed to get to as low as 0.04 when it comes to our error and the accuracy of our neural network on the test data is 90.36%, which is really decent. The world best on this data set is, I believe, 99.5%, something like that. So we are just 9% shy of the world record, which doesn't sound too bad, but actually to get to that level of accuracy requires a lot of additional work. So let's close this down. This entire application is completely open source and it's available on my GitHub. I'm also going to leave the link to that repository in the description of this video. So you can go ahead and try to build your own neural network, train it, and then please send me a PR with the output that you get. Every time that training completes, it's going to create a binary file containing the actual neural network model and it's going to save it on your local file system. So feel free to send a pull request with the best model that you can build. You can configure a lot of things here. I showed you how to configure the number of layers in a neural network, but if you open up the machine learning project, you can see a bunch of files inside. I'm not going to bother you with everything but things that you could try for the experiment are going to be perhaps some optimization algorithms 
or you can try a different activation function. In this example here, I'm using the softmax, which is required on the output layer, but the middle layers could use something different. I was using leaky relu because it was giving me the best results, but feel free to experiment with anything else. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you. I'm going to switch to the presentation project. When I start this, it's going to open up a Windows Forms application. This was actually written in .NET Framework. And let me show you the first step here, which is going to be running the benchmark on the test dataset. If I click Run Benchmark, I can choose which neural network model I want to use for this benchmark. So let's say I pick the best one I have, which is, I believe, 98.57% when it comes to accuracy. I'm going to choose just this one. And you can see what the testing process looks like. We're going to feed 100 images at a time to our neural network, and it's going to give us a prediction of what number it thinks is on the image. The prediction by the network is on the right side here. You can see that the network thinks that this is an 8, but it's actually the number 2, and we know this because we have our data set. You can also do a few more things, such as draw a number, and then ask your network to classify this. And what's interesting with neural networks is that they can tell you with relatively good accuracy which number it is. But if I draw something random, like the first letter of my name, and try to classify this, you can see that it's pretty confident that this is actually the number four. Whereas we know that this is just the letter M. And this is a problem with supervised learning because you produce a model that can only classify digits in this example. If you try to draw anything else, the output of the neural network is entirely useless. Another thing I have that you can try out is the sliding window, which doesn't work all too great. But what's going to happen here is we're going to have a sliding window like this. And this is probably going to mess up my classification, but never mind. And we're going to move this sliding window along the screen and try to detect where we have some pixels that could contain a digit. And then we're going to feed that into our neural network and try to produce an output. Now, this implementation isn't the best, but you can see that we get some interesting results here. I'm going to close this down and restart the application because I want to show you something else. And I'm going to click Run Benchmark again. And instead of choosing just one neural network, I can go ahead and choose multiple. This is how I can create a cluster of neural networks that are going to vote on the actual result. So I'm going to choose most of the good neural networks that I have with over 98% of accuracy. And our neural networks are going to take each individual image. Each network is going to process this image. And then we're going to use all of the outputs to vote on the correct answer. And you can see that when we combine multiple neural networks, we get a better result than any individual network has. I believe the best model I have is around 98.57%. And when we combine all of them, we get an output that is 98.03% in accuracy. And this is actually pretty close to the world best. We're only misclassifying 97 images out of 10. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to neural networks, and I recommend that you check out the repository and try to create your own neural network and possibly share the result in a pull request. Let me know in the comments if I should do some more videos about machine learning, possibly with some more advanced and practical examples. If your head is tired from all of this rambling about neural networks, then I suggest that you watch this video next for a relaxing discussion about software architecture. Also, check out my clean architecture and modular monolith courses. And until next time, stay awesome.